This lesson focuses on bullets and numbering, uh, features we use all the time in, in Word documents. So I'm going to start with uh, how to create them. There are two ways. You can start with an existing list, or you can you can create the bulleting and numbering as you're typing. Uh, I usually just turn it on from here, right? So if I want a bullet, bulleted list, I'll just turn on the bullet, and then I'll define which bullet that I want, all right? And if, if I don't like... Uh, more on bullets later, but that's how I would start it. Or if I want a numbered list, I would just click this and then start typing. And as you type and hit enter, it assumes, Word always assumes that whatever you had in the last paragraph, you want in the next one. So it'll just keep, as you hit enter, it'll just keep giving you numbers. All right, so uh, that's way, one way to start. The other way to start that I've never actually used, um, but I know some people use it, is you go one dot space and it assumes that you want a, a numbered list. The other I guess with number with bullets that I also didn't know is if you start with asterisk space, it assumes you want a bullet. All right. Um, the other thing I guess you should know is when you when you want to turn off your bullet to the your numbered list, when you hit enter, just hit enter twice. It'll assume all right. You want to go back to normal, uh, or y your other choice is hit backspace and then maybe backspace again. And then one more time to remove the indent, and then you can go back to just a regular uh, a paragraph. So those are the ways that you would start a bulleted or numbered list, and how you end a bulleted and numbered list. Um, back to this menu, you have many, many choices. So a little bit of time with bullets. So from bullet here, if you don't like the shortcuts that they give you, you can go to define new bullet. And from there, I mean, they want you to know that there's picture. I've tried picture. It doesn't do a very good job because it takes whatever picture you have and it turns it into such a miniature that most pictures are undiscernible. You have no idea what the heck it is. So you can do picture. You need to know that it's there. I'm not going to waste any more time on it if you want to try it. Symbol is really what most people use. Now you've got all your basic wingdings and you've got lots of them. All right. And then you've got wingdings too. And then you got webdings. So the idea here is whatever the theme of your of your document is, you can match your bullets to, right? So here I'm talking about summer, so I could put a nice picture of an umbrella and some water. And let me show you what alignment does. Not a whole lot. Um, the default says right. So if I change it to left, watch the preview here. It's just remove. It's decreasing the amount of indent between your bullet and your and your text. And center does that. So that's it. That's the subtle little change that that does. It doesn't align your paragraph. It's simply changing the indentation between your bullet and your text. So I'm just going to hit OK here. And I got it for that paragraph because that's what I had selected. So that's the bullet that I got there. Uh, for numbers, um, so I'm going to just select this text instead. And for numbers, again, you have all these choices to choose from. All right, so whatever one you want, you would choose. Right, and there you go. And if you don't like that one, you can come back and pick a, di a different style. It's that easy. Um, if you want to sort this, you can, right? So for it from here, if I decide I want to sort these alphabetically, I can say put that in alphabetical order. I didn't really want to do that, so I'm just going to go undo, but I wanted you to know how you would do it. Um, I want to get into, I guess, now how to make these a little bit more... Uh, it gets a little bit more complex, I guess, is what I'm trying to say, is here you can get into multi-level lists. So uh, one thing that you can easily do without even getting into that is my list here has warm weather, longer days, water activities. And under water activities, I have one, two, three, four things that could be considered water activities. So instead of making that three, I want to make it three A and three B. The simplest way I can think of doing this is just go tab. Okay, you tab in. And it knows that you want that to be part of a sub list. Now, if you happen to be typing, all right, when you get to the next one, it's assuming you want another water thing, right? But if you don't want another water thing, shift tab brings you back to the main list. So tabbing in gives you a sub list, shift tab brings you back out. This is kind of a universal feature. It also applies in PowerPoint when you're working with lists. While I'm on the topic, if you're not happy with indentation, um, we studied this in the paragraph. Um, lesson. So uh, here, I think A is f indented way too far from the main list. So you can select these here 
And all you need to do is drag the bottom icon. The bottom one does everything, right? So I, I want the, the space between A and Jessica to be the same. So I'm not going to mess with the top or the middle marker. I just want to take the bottom one and bring it over again a little bit. You see how it was, in my humble opinion, it was far too indented. So you have the ability to manipulate that once you're in the list. And I don't need four, so I'm just going to backspace, backspace until four is gone. And here I am. Now, um, I'm going to undo that. I'm just going to bring this. Uh, I'm going to go Shift Tab, Shift Tab. Oop, let go of the Shift Tab. Shift too early. All right, so it's back to here. I want to get into this. Okay, uh, so here you have multi-level list, and whenever you hit Tab, you'll get whatever. So right now it was defined as one A and then that, and then that. So as you tab in, these are the levels you'll get, all right? Now, what's going to happen is, is at some point in time, somebody's gonna tell you that they want a document to look exactly like this, right? And as chances are, it won't be on this list. So you're going to need to define a new multi-level list. This happens more often than you can imagine. So let me simplify this as easily as I possibly can. I want the first level to have whatever style so that they're, you're probably going to know what it needs to be so if this isn't the style you want it to be if you don't want it to be a number let's say it has to start with a right a capital a you would say all right so the first level has to be a capital a and you set that all right um you can change the font all right uh you can change where it starts which is rare right if you if something had to start at b you can change that i've, I've rarely had to do that uh, the number alignment, as we mentioned, is, I don't know that I would mess with much of this, but you can, all right? You can change how your number is aligned. You can change how far it indents. You can do all of those things, okay? You, and, and you have all, so you can manipulate an awful lot. I have the whole menu brought out here so that you see what your options are. So if the test asks you to do something, you'll know that you can do that. So now I want to apply the change to either the whole list from this point forward or only the list that I've selected. Those are your choices. I can link this to a style. So if you have an existing style and they say, apply this new list, multi-level listing to a certain style, you can do that. And then when you go back and you hit style, it will have your multi-level list. I know it gets a little bit complicated, but it's important for you that to know that you have that possibility. Um, now back to this. I wanted the first level to be a capital letter. Fine. Now I want to define the second level. So the second level now, they may want it to be a number. So fine. That's going to be a number. So it'll be A1, right? So A, B, C, C1, C2, C3, right? And now when I get to the third level, they'll probably want to go back to some kind of a, a number. And it might be that, that little thing that they got going there right here. Or it might be something else. All right? They might decide that you, they want something else, right? They want might want a bullet or they want might want something different, a Roman numeral, let's say, right? And then you could say that's done. And then the next level, they want a small a. And you'd be surprised how many documents out there have multi-levels. I don't know that I've ever seen one with nine levels, but it's important for you to know that you have the ability to totally program that, right? To whatever it is somebody's asking you to do. So it was in the multi-level here, right? So I'm defining this and I'm saying, okay, I want, I want this to go this way. So now they've changed from A and now when I go to water activities and I go and I'm here, I would say, there you go. So now I'm getting the number, I'm getting the number, I'm getting the number, I'm getting the number. And uh, Now, I showed you how to change this manually, and I just want to go back to this menu here and show you how you might want to define it if you're if you're setting up from scratch here. So level one is indented at, it's aligned at 0.25, and the text is indented at five. So for the next one, I probably want it to be aligned at 0.5 and text indent at 0.75. So I'm going to go to the next level, and they went one extra, which is why it's, it looks so big. So if I go to 0.5, and then here go to 0.75, it's probably gonna look a lot better. You see that, all right? So I prefer that. You can manipulate it from here or if you're setting up your own personal customized multi-level, you can do that there.
So a little complex, I understand, but it's important that you know that because they're, they're looking for that in the tests from what I can tell. So once again, it's important to know that when you're at the end of your list, when you hit enter, you're going to get, it assumes you want the exact same type of number or bullet that you had. And if you don't, hitting enter once more will work. And I'm just going to pretend that we're typing in another paragraph here. So we've, we're finished with our list and we're typing something else. And then when you hit enter again, you're getting that. Now, when you hit number again or multi-level number again, right, I'm just going to hit uh, multi-level number again. Um, or I'll just hit number again and see what happens. All right. So right, right now, if you were wanting to continue from the last list, there's two things here. Um, it's the autocorrect came up and it's asking, do you want to continue numbering? And that gives you the opportunity to say, yeah, I do. And that brings you back to your list. The other way of bringing that list back is right clicking. Okay. And here you can ask for continue numbering. And sometimes it'll continue numbering on its own without having asked you or prompted you. And if that's not what you wanted to do, if you wanted to start a new list, right clicking once again will allow you to say, no, 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 restart. Give me a new list. So right clicking is your option. Going back into these menus is an absolute waste of time. All right. So if you're looking to restart um, or start a new one, right click and the, the autocorrect, those are your options. That's what they've set it up to work as. I've wasted many a time looking in the menus. Don't waste your time. It's right click or autocorrect. All right, so those are the main things that you need to know regarding bullets and numbering. And please make sure uh, that, you, that you check these out, check all of these out and understand real quickly, real easily what it is that these things do. It's very logical, it's very simple, but they might ask you to do something that seems really weird uh, in multi-level, but once you spend a little bit of time, you should be able to figure it out in here.